I'm with Jared Tate, the founder and creator of Digibyte. Jared, how are you today? Doing fabulous. How about you? I'm doing, I'm not bad. Are you in uh, Idaho still? Yep, I'm up in Idaho, and uh, we just officially hit six months straight with snow on the ground. The uh, have, long. If you had record snow there, I have friends in Utah and say it's just been epic. Epic. Yeah. Yeah. They're saying this is the longest cold stretch and was snow on the ground since like 1899. Um, but yeah, we've, we've had a heck of a winter, so I'm, uh, I'm ready to go to Hawaii sometime soon here and get some sun. Yeah. Come on out. Well, the West needs the snowpack. They need the. Yeah. Water. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We really need the water. Um, so you are one of our favorite people at crypto viewing. I interviewed you a few couple, I guess it's been a couple of years ago at least. And the response was great. People just love your philosophy, your outlook on life, your political stance and your stance on cryptos. Uh, tell us for those who didn't hear that original uh, interview it was the 2008 financial crash that caused you to create Digibyte, wasn't it? Yeah. You know, um, at the time I actually was planning and I was, I was contracted in the United States Army to the Idaho National Guard. I was going into my junior year in college. Um, I was going to fly helicopters and I had eye surgery in August of 2008 and that fall, as the financial crisis unfolded and Lehman Brothers collapsed in, in September of 2009, um, the state of Idaho actually cut its budget, cut 25% across every department, and my officer slot was actually cut. So all of a sudden, I went from you know having a guaranteed career uh, to uh, the Pentagon telling me because I had this eye surgery and that the state was cutting its budget that I no longer had a slot and uh, I could come back in two or three years. But until then, I had to go out on my own. And so literally overnight, uh, because of the financial crisis, my life was uh, flipped up upside down. And, you know, I went out trying to find a job. I remember sending out a couple hundred job applications and nobody would even respond. And, you know, um, I like to tell people, you know, I'm I'm 35 now, but I know people that are a year or two years ahead of me and, you know, a year behind me that their careers have been absolutely stunted because there's just kind of this five year gap because of the 2008 financial crisis. So, uh, yeah, that's what let, you know, put me on the path to try and figure out what's going on with this banking system. Why did this happen? You know, why does the Federal Reserve have so much power? And, you know, that eventually led me to eventually discover uh, Bitcoin. So what what was your vision for Digibyte? It's it's a similar platform to uh, Bitcoin, as I recall. Well, what's your what are you trying to do with Digibyte? Well, you know, when I first started going through the Bitcoin core source code, which I, I first started in uh, the fall of 2012, um, I started realizing, hey, I think there's some ways we could make this better. You know, we could make it faster. We could make the mining a little bit more decentralized. And by having another blockchain um, that is truly decentralized, you get a little bit of uh, a resilience and a fallback to the network. And so, you know, our goal from day one with Digibyte has been to keep it truly decentralized and to provide a faster, more secure and more decentralized uh, proven UTXO proof of work blockchain. And, you know, here we are over nine years later now with 100% uptime. And I truly believe we are uh, one of, if not the most truly decentralized blockchains in the world today. So it's, it's my understanding, and I believe that Bitcoin is going to have its place as a settlement tool, as the big dog, the big, the big money, the international uh, settlements between large corporations, multinational corporations and countries and nation states. And so we need a currency like Digibyte that is going to be for everyday use, that's going to be faster, more nimble, yet still decentralized and secure. Is that that where you would like to see it go? Like a like a faster everyday version of Bitcoin if Bitcoin becomes a, like a settlement tool? You know, I, I think um, Bitcoin definitely is kind of that rigid 
uh, store of value, you know, long term that that nation states can kind of use as a reserve asset to trade back and forth. Right. I, I see Digibyte as an augmentation to that. You know, Digibyte itself as a currency uh, is limited. You know, there's only going to be 21 billion Digibytes and, you know, there's only going to be 21 million Bitcoin. So that's a one to a thousand ratio. So you still have some of the exchange and fluctuations and volatility issues. However, with Digibyte, we've tried to incorporate like a Digi Assets layer, uh, something we call Digi ID, where you can be in control of your own digital identity and information. So I look at Digibyte as a secure backbone and a network layer that additional currencies can be created and minted on top of, but also mm -hmm. as a layer for you or me or anybody to be able to take charge of their own data and secure their own digital assets, you know, moving into the future. Um, the, so it's sorry to interrupt. I, uh, the the digital ID is going to be in part an important component of this because we are going to a digital ID, and I think you're on the cutting edge of that with Digibyte. Well, I, the way I look at it, you know, blockchain technology is going to be used to either free and liberate humanity and help us move to the stars and, and help, you know, give freedom back to us as individuals, or it's going to be used to further control and enslave us. And the way that digital IDs are handled moving forward in the future is going to be absolutely very important. And that's why I think it's uh, it's almost the do or die situation when it comes to the fact that we as individuals should be able to control our own digital identity. Yeah. Now we had a, tremendous run in November of 2021. It was like cryptos were just on fire, Digibyte included. It, we've been in a down market. Now we're seeing another uh, Bear Stearns, Lehman Brothers moment. Do you think uh, we're on the cusp of some serious, well, it's obvious we're on the cusp of some serious bank problems. What, what do you see? Well, I, I think, you know, I've studied the 2008 financial crisis at, in detail, and it, it's, I mean, the parallels are very scary, except this time, I think it's much worse. Um, you know, so we just had Silicon Valley Bank fail, Signature Bank. And the crazy part, it was almost to the exact week and almost to the exact day that uh, Bear Stearns failed in March of 2008. Uh, but today, like just before we hopped on this interview, I just caught the headlines that the CEO of UBS is is resigning and just uh, uh, left his post. And you got to ask why? Well, you know, UBS supposedly just acquired Credit Suisse or Credit Suisse, however you Credit pronounce Suisse, it. Credit Suisse, yeah. Credit yeah. Suisse. That was that was a sketchy deal because they they paid they got a discount. They paid like sixteen billion, but what they acquired was this hundreds of billions in debt. Well, and that's why the UBS CEO apparently behind the scenes was fighting it and said, no, this is a suicide, you know, mission for UBS. I don't want to be part of it. And well, obviously he just resigned and left. So, you know, uh, Credit Suisse was considered too big to fail. Well, what happens when one of the largest and oldest European banks fails? Then, you know, then what happens? Uh, well, it's it's pretty obvious that other countries are seeing the handwriting on the wall. Uh, look at all these recent agreements from Saudi Arabia, right? I mean, why is Saudi Arabia starting to make deals with all these other countries to sell oil outside of the U.S. dollar? Um, you know, it, it seems very apparent that a, a huge part of the world is not only seeing what's what's happening and unfolding and they're making you know moves to protect themselves but they're also being forced into it because some of the decisions you know politicians in Washington DC are made, are being made so where this financial crisis comes from whether it's something of our own making or incompetence or you know regardless of what triggers it <laughs> it's it, it's definitely happening yeah, we've got uh, back to uh, UBS and Credit Suisse. Uh, that was just a way to kick the can farther down the road. It's like, what can we do today? So this bank, I, I know someone who works at uh, Credit Suisse, and they were hours away from not being able to open the bank and function. So they had to do this deal, and it was a temporary fix. It was a Band-Aid. The next one is going to be 
Deutsche Bank, the next European bank that's going to have trouble. And what you said about countries fleeing the dollar is absolutely correct. I hear Mexico is is uh, making noises like they're going to go with the digital Chinese yuan. So if you have Russia, China, Saudi Arabia, Brazil, India, Mexico abandoning the dollar, all that inflation is going to dump on Americans. Well, well, not and- only that. Um, but if you look at how the U S has pushed control of crypto markets outside of of the U S control, um, you know, a lot of people used to kind of think I was crazy, but in 2016, I was invited to Beijing to speak and I presented about Digibyte. Well, the presentation before me, uh, there was two PhD Chinese government researchers that basically outlaid this plan where they would use blockchain technology in conjunction with one belt, one road, you know, where they basically established the infrastructure and ports throughout yeah. Africa, throughout Europe uh, and throughout, you know, uh, Asia that they would use digital currency to facilitate the trade between all these new economic trading partners. But to do that, they had to start acquiring assets in the, in the cryptocurrency, in the blockchain space, and to basically build up enough infrastructure to where they control all the major trading platforms where one day they flip a switch and instead of you know being the hub for decentralized crypto all of a sudden we have the digital B that's being forced and controlled and and here we are in 2023 yeah. they've basically set it up you well, know they're they're closing off the on ramps and off ramps all these banks that are going under are crypto friendly banks and they're squeezing the uh the exchanges and they're squeezing the uh, stable coins. So they're really trying to put the squeeze on the the accessibility to cryptos to the common man. So well, I've 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 told people for years. I truly believe that the day will come as the U.S. dollar starts losing dominance and its status as the world's reserve currency that domestically inside the United States, the government will crack down on crypto and make it illegal to own decentralized blockchain assets like Bitcoin or Digibyte or or Litecoin or others. And the precedent's already been done for this. I mean, what was it? Executive Order 6102 when FDR outlined the private ownership of gold and silver in 1933. You know, that that stood for 39 years until I think it was 1972 where that finally changed. So the U.S. government's already done this. Why would they not do this in a desperate attempt to save a failing dollar? So, Jared, what's the what's the solution? What's your way around that? How do we prevent that? Well, first of all, I think we need to help educate and 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 inform as many uh, you know people we know our friends family members because the more of us that are aware of what's going on the mm-hmm. more of us can stand up against this and then the second thing is to take charge and custody of your own digital uh private keys right so your private keys are how you control your assets and you you prove ownership of your bitcoin or your digibyte and if we all store our own private keys that means not leaving it on an exchange and if they they try and you know, have banks that'll storm for us. The, the key is we have to control these assets by ourselves because at the end of the day, they're not going to be able to come and, and reach into everybody's single, every single person's computer or phone, you know, at the same time, it's, it's impossible. Yeah. The banks are going to make it so attractive. Like, Oh, you're keeping hold of your private keys or dealing with yourself and your private wallets too. You just trust us. We'll hold your assets for you. We're now, we've just got regulations in place where we're your trusted agent and we'll hold, we can have custodial care of your cryptos. Don't fall for that. Keep it yourself. Use Digibyte. So if, if Digibyte would come up to one one thousandth of the value of Bitcoin, you'll be doing very well. I'll be doing very well too, because I have a bunch of Digibyte. That would be beautiful. Well, you know, that's one of the things about Digibyte is uh, unlike most of the other projects out there, there wasn't a mass pre-mine. So I did today as a sold founder, I actually don't have that much as much as I would like to. Um, I'm working on ways to get more, but uh, you know, unfortunately I've had bills and stuff to pay over the last couple of years and 
you know, that's the reality. But the reality is Digibyte's truly decentralized. And, you know, basically, I, as the founder, I'm holding less than a fraction of 1% of less than 1%. So wow. that is why I say Digibyte is truly one of the most, if not the most decentralized assets out there. So um, I, I don't want to get too personal. It's It's bad manners to ask such a question. But uh, did you take a little bit out in that run up in November of 2021? I didn't. I left all my. I, I, I didn't either. You know, I've been through those run ups several times and, uh, you know, I've kind of been a dedicated hodler for life. And, you know, then at the at the worst possible time, you know, life throws some curveballs and, you know, you have some unexpected ex yeah. expenses. But that's, that's the way it is. But, you know, I'm I've, I've been here for nine years. I'm not going anywhere. And the amazing part about Digibyte is there's a grassroots community that has organically been built up. And there are some amazing, talented people that are helping, uh, you know, further it every day. Um, and. You told me an interesting story when we first talked that you you were writing this code and you were talking with people on uh, like uh, online IRC. forums. Yeah. yeah. And somebody anonymously helped you with the code. Yeah, Remember there's actually. Yeah, there's been several, several anonymous people that have helped with the code over the last nine years. I told that wow. story to someone who's very knowledgeable of how the world works. And he said, Dick, you understand how that works? That there is a that there is a higher power that wants you to succeed. Like somebody is is helping you that Digibyte has somehow been. Um, yeah, you were. It's meant to be that when the help was there, I'm, I'm not talking like. Uh, in a religious or a supernatural sense, it's just the powers that be uh, wanted to give you a little help. That's and yeah. that's a good story. No, I, I I think that's definitely happened, and and I think continues to happen in some interesting ways. Um, but it, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's growing into something that's, you know, definitely not just me. It's literally an amazing community, yeah. you know, across the globe and, and it continues to grow. And, you know, that's why we're here is for moments like this. The reason I've spent the last decade of my life working on this technology is, is I believed that there would be another financial crisis to happen. The problems that created the last one haven't gone away. In fact, they've been magnified. But the reality is, if we just have a complete collapse and there's no other options, there's nowhere else to go. I mean, I don't want to have to, you know, worry about sitting on my front porch with a uh, rifle, you know, defending yeah. my property and shooting looters and marauders. That's not a life I want to live, right? And I don't want that for anybody. And so, to me, blockchain technology has been a way to provide people and humanity with another option that's a nonviolent solution that we can all, you know, work towards and become part of that, you know, when the real crisis hits, we're not panicked. And we're like, hey, there is another option here. We are definitely in the transition to a new financial system that is going to be digital blockchain distributed ledger technology. And you're helping facilitate that transition by what you're doing with Digibyte. Are you keeping up with it, this is hard to keep up with chat uh, GPT, the 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 uh, artificial intelligence. Have you dabbled yeah, in that I, at all? I, I've actually been using it almost on a daily basis since it came out. Um, and this, you know, chat GPT-4, which was released, what, 10 days ago, 15 days ago, uh, is, is a mind-blowing step up from chat GPT-3. Um, you know, when it comes to coding, there's some things that I've had a code for me that would have taken me days and it just spits it out in 30 seconds. Uh, I mean, it's a truly, and you know, I've been telling people it, it this weird of uh, uh, like incredible moment in time. Uh, you know, if we go back to the invention of the steam engine or the invention of the automobile or the airplane or, or the first computer, or the internet in 1994, we're at one of those moments, but at a, a, exponentially more explosive moment and and 
This is going to go one of two ways. Uh, you know, I, I, you, I don't know if you saw it, but Elon Musk and uh, uh, Wozniak and a bunch of leading AI researchers just signed a document asking everyone to halt what they're doing for six months yeah. on AI. Um, I think it's because you know, everybody's realizing like, holy, holy cow, like this is here and it's going to happen. Uh, I can tell you that the way I code will never be the same uh, I, again. It, we we have uh, people that are doing research like on cryptocurrencies. You could take a team of researchers, like get 10, 12 people, have them scour white papers, listen to uh, conferences, uh, listen to YouTube, uh, talk to people like you, read what you've done. And they could spend months scouring that information and then assimilating it and then boiling it down to a report. And it would take a team of people months, if not a year. And the uh, AI can do that for you in minutes. It's just, it's just uh, almost, I don't think any of us understand how fundamentally this is going to change things. And what it's like, there's a, I, I did a YouTube segment once called, uh, was it the forty second fold? Like if you take a piece of paper and fold it, it's still a you know a thousandth of an inch. And you fold it again and fold it again. By the time you fold it forty two times, it would reach to the moon. And we're at a moment now where AI is making that fold, where information technology is just going to go poof. Well, interesting. In, in in that, times, yeah, yeah, no, I, I, you're absolutely right. I mean, we are at the biggest, most explosive exponential point. Oop, I, I lost your audio for a minute. Okay, start again. We're at. Go ahead. Uh yeah, we're we're at the biggest, most exponential, most influential point in human history, and it's going to happen so fast and so rapidly. It's going to make people's head spins. But there's a lot of dangers with this, right? And yeah. and some of those dangers are how this technology can be used to um, attack, harass, or um, negatively influence people. Like, for instance, like, let's take this interview. How do people know who are watching this that it's really me and it's really you? How, how do they know that this isn't an AI generated video um, using a compilation of previous videos that that you and I have both posted on the Internet in various forms? They don't know. But guess what? With blockchain technology, I could take my private key and my digital ID. You could take your private key and your digital ID, and we could actually very verify each other's signatures, verify the content of this video, and anybody could basically cryptographically use the Digibyte blockchain and verify that we are who we say we are, and that you know we're 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 actually having this conversation, and it's real. There you go. Let's on our next conversation. We'll have another conversation a little later and we'll do that with your Digibyte blockchain. We'll set that up because that's a that is uh, a really good use of it, the, it, uh, it is, ID function. Yes, it's not that easy to do right now, but it's possible. And that's something that we need to work on to help make it easier for people, because this is going to be a bigger and bigger issue. I mean, what happens when somebody's uh, framed of committing a crime when someone uses AI to generate images or a yeah. video of them doing something they're not doing? Right. Sorry, I'm getting. Um, oh. oh, sorry. I've got Indian call scammers calling me over and over again. So I need to <laughs> turn my that's... phone ringer off. You know, um, uh, we did a, let me turn this off. Sorry about that. We took an interview that I did with a gentleman. I won't say who, but it's it's someone pretty well known to crypto viewing. He's a pretty well known author and he's a radio, uh, he, he appears on radio shows around the world. And we took an interview and we we fed his voice in and I was able to just type in you know, a, a few sentences and his voice came out saying it. And we had him saying something that was just the complete opposite of what he would say. It was, it was exactly 180 degrees from his view of things. And it sounded just like him. And we played it for him. And he said, Oh my God, please delete that. Don't let that get out. So it's scary. 
what they well, and do. that's that's why I tell people and what I wrote in my book. You know, blockchain technology is really our only hope and way of keeping AI in check. Uh, you know, I always think that blockchain is the rails that AI should run on. Mm -hmm. And there's several ways and several different things that can be done to enforce this. But unfortunately, that's not happening right now. Uh, there's absolutely no verification or authentication or any sort of, um, you know, structure being placed on the way AI is used. And that's where I think the only way it's going to come about is from the end user by using blockchain technology to help verify some of the stuff. And, and I believe, and I, I'm going to go out on record and predict this, that in the next, uh, you know, 24 months, we're going to see very high level court cases with celebrities and other people that have either been framed or accused or set up of crimes that they didn't commit because there's going to be AI generated images, videos, text, documents, you name it, that are being used to, uh, I guess, set up or incriminate or frame people. And it's going to become an even bigger problem. So not only are you going to have to worry about uh, your digital identity getting stolen in the terms of just, you know, people breaching services and stealing the data, but actually stealing you and your digital presence and new yeah. content that's put out there. I was told it would be a good idea to copyright my name, my voice, and a video of myself, either patent it, copyright it, get a trademark. <clears throat> we may come to that. Well, you mentioned your book, Jared. Plug your book for us. Tell oh, us about yeah. Your book. Uh, well, the book Blockchain 2035, the Digital DNA of uh, Internet 3.0. I wrote it in 2019. Uh, so it's four years old now, but it still has some relevant points, although I have thought about writing a, a revised edition because I think there's been a lot of updates and changes, especially the last four years in blockchain technology. Uh, but you can find it on Amazon. Okay. Very good. Well, we are, like you say, we are at a turning point in human history. Everything's the banking crisis, the culture wars, the loss of faith in every institution by design. Uh, the financial crisis, there's no way out of the banking crisis. There's, they can't paper it over much longer. So we're going to see the blockchain technology emerge out of the ashes of that. And hopefully it will be the vision that you're, uh, that you're promising with Digibyte. That's why we support Digibyte. We love you, man. Thank well, you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks for the support. And yeah, I mean, I think as, as long as we're all, you know, moving forward in this together, you know, we can get through it and come out on the other side and, and build a very prosperous, bright future for humanity. Um, yeah, that was an important phrase you just used moving forward. We're all we're find a way to move forward because the past is the past is going to be the past. It's it's going to be a smoking crater, a ruinous, you know, oh. hulking. Uh, yeah, it's going to be ugly. Hopefully not radioactive. That's the that's the part yeah. that I'm 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 yeah crossing my fingers on. All right. Well, stay warm up there in Idaho. You're going to get quite a spring runoff. If it gets warm fast, the streams are going to be really rushing. Yeah, that's what we're uh, we're gearing up for some springtime flooding especially with this amount of snowpack, but it sounds like it's going to happen all over the West. So yeah, we'll do. So, so fine tune that way to use your Digibyte digital identity to verify both of us on the blockchain. And in the future, we'll do another interview where we'll do that. And we'll use that as an, as an example. Yeah. You know, I think this is uh, this is definitely the time uh, to get that, you know, we first prototyped this, uh, back in 2015, 2016, mm. but at the time it just didn't get a lot of attention and people didn't really seem to care. Or, you know, I mean, just crypto in general was, was just struggling at that point. But, yeah. um, I think now with what people can see is happening with AI, it's going to be more relevant than ever before. Yeah. All right. Great to talk with you. Thank you so much, Jared, for uh, spending time with us. Jared Tate, the founder of Digibyte. Do you some Digibyte, folks? Thank Take you. Take care, Jared. Aloha. Yep, you too.